think this is in focus. Today I'm excited Cause it's new natural Ethiopia Times at Perth That's my song. It's new natural process Ethiopia day. It's called Sasaba. I don't have a bag, so we're going to add that in post. Uh, yeah. Sasaba. Okay. Uh, welcome back to Coffee Talk, where we get some coffee and talk about it. Um, brought to you by me, Bradley, your roaster and hoster. Um, yeah, so excited you can join us today. We're going to do the chemics of our new natural Ethiopia. Um, very fancily unlabeled. This is minimalism. I don't know, whatever. Back to good old roots here on Coffee Talk. Um, yeah, so I don't know, it's, pr it's really no secret that I'm a huge fan of Natural Ethiopias. I've talked about it before in videos. Um, and I don't know, I think the reason why that is is like they just hit that perfect sweet spot between juicy, complex, delicate acidity um, that's like interesting and varied and super unique and just like rich sweetness and like satisfying just that that mmm factor, you know? Hashtag that mmm factor. Anyway, yeah, so they're kind of my jam. Um, I'm going to grind this on, what is that, 18? Kettle's hot. Newsflash, hot things are hot. Um, <laughs> Yeah, today I'm just doing my normal, my kind of standard Chemex recipe. We're gonna do 30 grams of coffee and 450 grams of water with a little bit of agitation and a little bit of a good stirry stir. Yeah, all right, here we go. I'm gonna start the timer and start pouring. You know me, I am not one for anything overly complicated or fancy when it comes to me and my coffee because I already do that all day, you know? Uh, I try to get really fancy with my roasting profiles so that uh, you don't have to get fancy brewing it at home. But uh, yeah, so a nice, uh, can make some nice little stir there. And this is super fresh. I roasted this yesterday, so it's nice and bubbly, energetic. One of these days I'll get like a camera and put it like right above the Chemex here. Um, that could be pretty cool. And then also I'll get that camera, um, the ability to transfer smells cause holy moly does this smell good. Um, yep, just doing our nice relaxed Chemex pour, making sure to hit all the, all the spots of the slurry that Look like they need water. Moving in some nice even spirals. Getting down the edges there. Yeah, I'm just gonna pour it to 450 grams and let it drain down. Boop. Cool. Um, then, once we hit 450, I'm gonna give this just a gentle little swirl. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this before, um, this is relevant. If you're ever brewing a Chemex um, and the filter starts sticking through the little pour spout on this side here, um, maybe I'll turn this around so you can see. Yeah, if the, if the filter kind of collapses into this spot here, um, that's actually going to impede the flow of water through the slurry into the bottom because atmospheric pressure is a thing. Um, you need to have, if this water is going to displace the air in here, the air needs to have somewhere to escape, right? And that's why the, this little spout is here. Um, 
But you know, if the filter gets too wet or compromised or whatever way, or security is compromised, um, yeah, then I'll, I'll actually take this chopstick and I'll kind of slide it um, down the side here. Um, obviously you want to do this with something that's not going to like fall apart. None of those like really cheap disposable chopsticks. I have, I happen to have a decent pair. Um, but yeah, that'll help keep the filter away from the side here and yeah, help everything uh, flow down smoothly. So I'm going to wait for this to drip down. We'll do a fancy time lapse and uh, yeah, I'll see y'all in a hot second. The rules of coffee talk are not many in number, but the pro the premiere of them is don't drink your coffee when it's hot. We know this. So um, yeah, I'm drinking out of this mug. Um, this is my wife's mug, but I am commandeering it today because uh, she doesn't do a lot of coffee drinking, especially not at um, like six o'clock in the afternoon when this video is currently being shot. So I really like it because it looks uh, like Totoro from the movie, My Neighbor Totoro, which I just watched for the first time and I really liked it. Um, Totoro is a big old huggable nature spirit. And that's just... if we could all get hugged by a big cuddly nature spirit, I think that would solve a lot of the world's problems. Anyway, um, enough talk. Let's uh, let's rock the beans here. I love this so much. I'm having an emotional spiritual experience right now. Please excuse me. Um, yeah, so right off the bat, I think if I were to sum up this coffee in one phrase, uh, it would be sweet tea. Um, because it is vibrant, it is like refreshing, and it is also like richly satisfying. It's, it's just so good. Um, right away, there's a lot of blueberry uh, acidity, but it's very like muted. Um, it's almost, um, if you think about the difference between like a, a grape and a raisin, um, that, I mean, that's the best way to like describe the difference between like washed processed coffees and natural processed coffees. Um, a lot of the sugars and acidity um, in washed coffees are very present, they're very bright, um, they're very forward. Whereas with natural process, um, they are kind of a little more muted, they're a little subtler, subtler? Um, yeah, and they just, they're a little more um, round and uh, supportive in a way. Um, kind of, we talked a little bit about uh, in the, the last episode of this with the new Brazil. It, that also is a natural processed coffee. So it's gonna have a little bit more of a um, lower range, I guess. I talked about kind of like the EQ graph of coffee. Um, it's gonna have a little more lows and mids, um, the, that kind of flavor profile that is more developed. That's all here in, in this natural processed Ethiopia. But again, what I love about those natural processed Ethiopias is, is they still have a lot of that um, complexity and that um, floral kind of acidic interesting notes. Um, it's really the, the, perfect, the perfect balance of the two. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of blueberry, um, a lot of, Maybe some strawberry jammy kind of things going on there too. Um, I, I really am kind of in on that that raisin note. Um, yeah, like the demerara sugar. Um, yeah, kind of soft edged sweetness and acidity that's like very, very like delicate and fancy and fun and flirty and whatever. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But yeah, uh, then the, the body is just like, really sweet, um, but uh, just kind of fades into this very cool, very crisp, very floral finish that I think is really nice. Um, yeah, like that sweet tea kind of thing where it's like very refreshing and very interesting. The tea thing is not, the, the tea notes, the black tea notes aren't as like pronounced and like astringent uh, because this coffee is very sweet. I realized like, Maybe you don't know what natural process means. Um, this is a great opportunity to explain that. Um, coffee is a cherry. Coffee um, is like a little red cherry that grows on bushes um, in higher elevation mountainous kind of areas. Um, and that cherry is harvested uh, by hand when it's most ripe. Um, I 
it's, you can tell it by its color. It's really red, it's really vibrant. Um, people pick it and they um, throw them in baskets and they bring them back to uh, the washing station or processing station or mill, uh, depending on you know what's happening with the cherry and where they are in the world. And, um, washed coffees, um, the, the coffee cherry is fermented in tanks. Um, and this is a very broad generalization. There's like, there's an insane number of ways to process coffee and it all has a different effect actually on the flavor. Um, in fact, those are the two or three kind of most important factors in the flavor of coffee, where it's grown, like the terroir and the soil, um, the varietal of the coffee plant um, and the processing method. Um, those, that's kind of the three big things um, that contribute most to the flavor profile. So washed coffees, um, that whole cherry is actually removed from the seed, which is the coffee bean, um, before the coffee bean is set out to dry, um, usually on like a patio or a raised bed, um, and then is turned and, and, and dried to a, to a certain amount before it's you know bagged and shipped to us, the, the, the coffee roasters. Um, but naturally processed coffees um, have, and it, again, this depends on region and process, but the the um, coffee cherry actually stays on the seed um, for part or all of the drying process. Um, so yeah, with, um, with that, like all of the fruity coffee cherry-y flavor of the actual fruit, um, <laughs> go figure, gets kind of baked into the coffee seed. Um, so you get a little less, you're sacrificing some clarity, I guess, um, would be the best way to describe that. Um, by letting the coffee cherry dry on the seed, but you're also gaining a lot of sweetness, a lot of um, really rich, deep fruit flavors, um, which I think is just so good. And so it's, it's so savory and, and tasty. Um, yeah, um, the best way to describe the difference between a washed and a natural processed coffee is by thinking about um, fresh fruits versus like baked fruits or you know, uh, like a fresh fruit versus a, a stewed or preserved fruit. Um, the acidity is a little more mellowed. Um, it's less vibrant and punchy, um, but it's still there. And um, usually there's a little more complexity, a little more layering. Um, and I, again, all of these reasons, I could just keep talking and talking and talking about this, which it's coffee talk. That's what we're all here for. But in the interest of time, um, I'll kind of leave it there as, as kind of the, the description of natural process coffees. But yeah, so um, this video is probably super long as it is, and we can edit out some of that probably. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so the sasaba here, to kind of sum it up, I'll say we've got some, some blueberry, some demerara sugar, some black tea floral things going on as it, as it finishes. Um, very, very delicious. Um, try this with your Chemex, with your V60, with your AeroPress, you get even more of that like um, rich blankety kind of sweetness, which would be super good. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about um, the Ethiopia Sasaba, any of our other coffees, um, if you have any questions about brewing or um, roasting or just want to say hey drop them in the comments um, you can email us too I'm sure that'll get put on screen um, yeah love to talk coffee with you more personally um, do you want to pick up a bag as always you know where to go perkcoffee.com slash shop and uh, yeah that's it for me I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching hope you're well take care